I am Ronnie Elder. I am the health educator and media coordinator for the Vigo County Health Department. If everyone behind me would like to introduce themselves so we can know what organizations are represented. Hi, I'm Mark Kyle, and I'm System Director of Infection Control at Union Health. Brenda Kearns, Vigo County Commissioner. Joni Wise, Vigo County Health Department Administrator. Good afternoon, I'm Greg Good, Executive Director of Government Relations and University Communication at Indiana State University. Uh, I'm Tom High, Fire Chief of Anchorage Fire Department, but I'm representing the Vigo County Fire uh, Service. So if you have any questions for any of these organizations at the end, they will answer for that organization. On Tuesday, March 3rd, we met with about 30 people from hospitals, EMA, universities, and colleges, the school corporation, chamber of commerce, government, and the health department included, and we discussed the coronavirus and our response. We want to coordinate a timely, accurate message, and that was the takeaway from the meeting. So what we decided to do was to create a JIC, a Joint Information Center. We created an email that is just for this JIC, and it's for different people from the organization. There is a PIO, a public info officer, that is in charge of checking this email and coordinating with the Vigo County Health Department daily. So each day before 1 o'clock p.m., they are to email us and let us know if they have anything that they want to let the public know. This has included anything about coronavirus or just any trends or rumors that they're seeing in the public. Once we get all this information, we're going to put that on. As you can see on the screen, it's already gone live yesterday with our first update. So if you want to go on there and check that out each day before 4 p.m., it will be updated except for on the weekends. If there is something that happens on the weekends that we need to notify anybody about, it will be updated at that time. Does anybody have any questions about the JIC? So the main purpose of it is to keep people in the know. We don't want anybody to panic and think that we know something that you don't know or that we're hiding anything. We want to be open and honest and get that information to you as quickly and as accurately as possible. The reason that we're working with all these organizations is to make sure that if anything would come into our county, that we're all on the same page and we all know what to do. So this is all about being prepared and not reactive if it does come. No last minute plans. Do you guys have any questions about any for or, any of the organizations that are present? Just in general, with the recent announcement of the coronavirus being found in Indiana, will that change anything in terms of planning or preparation from the department or from the individual organizations? So we are still going forward forward with the plans that we had. Our plans were anticipating that it could come into our county, so we're still working on the same plans. Any reason to believe that it's close to our county even though it's not in Beagle County or with this announcement, is there any reaction to that? It's realistic to think that it eventually can come to our county, so that's why we're working as best we can to make sure that we're prepared. Yes. And so what does this now mean for businesses and So really what business and schools are starting to do is they're starting to make sure that things are wiped down and cleaned more efficiently, which is really something we should implement anyways for flu season. Really going through and wiping off counters that the public are touching and the employees are touching, going back and wiping those down, and then going back and looking over sick policies. Because if someone does have a cough and they're sick, we don't want them to go to the doctor's office to get a doctor's note just so they can make sure they're not in trouble at work. We want them to stay home and make sure that if they do have coronavirus or even influenza that they're containing that at home. And so should someone begin to show symptoms, what should that person do? So if they feel like they have symptoms of coronavirus, they should call the office that they're going to and let them know that they have these symptoms if they're calling the ambulance they should let the dispatchers know so that way EMTs can be prepared on what they need to do to protect themselves and that patient. Do you have the proper testing kits here in Beagle County to test for coronavirus at this time? If we would have someone come into a clinic that thought that they had coronavirus, we would call the state and we would coordinate with them on getting them tested. Okay, so the kits aren't here? No, we do not have them on site. No. Yep. 
And that will also be updated, as you can see, at the very top of the coronavirus update, we have confirmed cases, um, recovered cases, and total deaths. Any other questions? We do have updates on there from both regional and union. They've both implemented different visitor restrictions and um, their entrances are only like certain entrances that you can, co can come into so people can be screened as they come in. And that is to protect both the public and their patients. And that can all be found on this web page. You guys have any questions, comments, concerns? What does this mean for the people of Terre Haute? How should they be reacting right now? They still need to be doing all the things that we've been recommending, such as hand washing, don't touch your face, basic flu measures, you know, cover your coughs and sneezes, and then stay home if you are sick. We are saying that it is smart in general to have things at home, food, water, and medicine in case you were to have to stay home. The quarantine for this is two weeks, so if you could make it at home two weeks without your medication and food, not being able to go out. All right, if you guys don't have any questions, do the organizations want to give a brief rundown of what they're doing? Joni Wise, Vigo County Health Department. Some of the other things that we have done is review the um, isolation and quarantine code for Indiana and the power that is given to the local health officer. We've also worked with the county commissioners because they're the ones that if we ever reached a state of emergency would have the authority to declare it. Part of our joint information team um, are physicians and what they're going to do is reach out to urgent care offices and private providers and talk to them about the way that patients are screened on the phone, as, as Rodney alluded to, um, precautions to take in emergency rooms, um, and also precautions in an emergency room or in an urgent care waiting room, and making sure that if somebody goes to an urgent care facility and they're young and they're uh, in relatively good health and they're presenting with symptoms of a cough and a fever, not to be reactive and send them to the emergency room where there really are people with serious conditions. So we're working collectively on the clinical side and then we're also working on the um, communication side. Communication, clear, accurate, timely, consistent messages that the public needs to make an informed choice. Hi, Mark Collin with Union Health. I would just reiterate the comment you made. Uh, effective Monday morning at 5 a.m., we are going to implement visitor restrictions at Union Health. What this means specifically is at Union Hospital East, Building 1, and Union Hospital West, Building 2, the access to the building will be through the main entrance from the hours of 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then we are restricting visitation uh, after 9 p.m. Uh, it'll be a series of three questions that anybody coming through the main entrances uh, will be asked around fever, cough, shortness of breath, travel to uh, known areas identified by the CDC, and then uh, recent exposure to patients with uh, COVID-19. We do, uh, we emphatically appreciate the patience and understanding of the community as we work through this process. This is absolutely being done both at the request of governmental agencies and then also, it, more importantly, for it in the best interest of safety for the community. You want to talk about what the annex is doing? Well, I mean, within county government internally, we've met with our custodial staff. Um, a lot of people come through our doors, and they do a lot of leading on counters when they transact uh, business. So we stepped it up. We have a rotation in all areas, all public spaces of our buildings, to have the, um, every hour have everything sanitized. Um, so we've just we're stepping up measures here. Um, I've been in constant contact with our health department. Um, and other agencies through the JIC method. And um, we're just, you know, we're, we're paying attention to everything. If the time comes where we do have to um, declare a state of emergency for the county, the commissioners do make that call, but we're gonna rely on the health department and other agencies to get us to that decision. And even though we know that there currently isn't um, any uh, vaccine or medication for the coronavirus, 
I noticed our third three public health nurses entered the room. The three of them are looking over our mass prophylaxis plans. These are plans that we have used in the real world when we had the largest chickenpox outbreak in the United States here in Vigo County. We used the same plans to stand up clinics after the floods of 2008. So we're just reviewing and making sure that everybody's on the same page and the information is updated and ready to go if the time's needed. Sure, again, I'm Greg Good with Indiana State University. And, um, I think first and foremost, I want to thank Joni and uh, our county health department, our county commissioners, and our other partners. Uh, we've got some forward-thinking folks here and appreciate you pulling us together. And we look forward to working with you. Um, Indiana State University's actions on coronavirus are being guided by information provided by the CDC, uh, the United States Department of State, Indiana State Department of Health and of course the Vigo County Health Department. As we know that the State Department of Health announced the first confirmed case in Indiana, a Marion County man, and that there is no quote ongoing risk to the public from that particular patient. But that said, this is a situation that is evolving very quickly and Indiana State University is preparing for all situations. I want to encourage everyone with the media and the general public uh, to go to the Indiana State University homepage to stay current on the information relating to coronavirus in Indiana State University. We established this website uh, for communicating news as well as educational materials. And again, just go to www.indstate.edu and there's a clearly defined link where you can see the latest update uh, with regard to uh, this situation. For ISU, the most pressing matter relates to individuals preparing for university spring break trips overseas. Because of our concern for the health and the safety of our students, ISU is canceling all university-sponsored spring break travel to international locations. Meantime, we're closely monitoring the situation and we will continue to provide timely updates to the campus and these updates will continually uh, be easily accessible to the community. I think you all know that Indiana State takes its commitment to community engagement seriously and we want people to uh, remain confident and assured and feel very welcome to come to our campus. Uh, but if you want additional information on coronavirus, uh, just go to our, our website. And again, it's the quickest and easiest way for individuals to remain current. Again, thanks, Joni, and thank you all for being here. Tom, hi, with Lake Creek Fire Department. Um, we're not changing any of our policies, but we're reviewing uh, our PPE to make sure that we have the proper PPE for this um, situation. We're also going back over training and our protocols to make sure that our personnel are using the proper protocols and uh, keeping ourselves informed through the health department in this JIC so that our personnel are safe, so that we can provide the service that the county residents uh, want from their fire service. Okay, do you guys have any questions once you've heard that? Just following up, so if someone presents symptoms that could be the word coronavirus, a parent of a child or just anyone, what should they do? Should they still go to the doctor? Should they call? How should they handle it nowadays? Do you guys feel that they need to call before they come into a clinic? I think that that would be the best way to go about it. That way staff can be prepared that someone is coming in. That way if they do have coronavirus, they're not coming into the waiting room with everyone else and exposing them. And then as I said earlier, if they are calling for an ambulance, they need to let dispatch know that that is something that they think they have. Ryan, I want to add something. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a notification system that I know pretty much everybody in the room is familiar with, the Nixel system. But I think it's good to let people know that we do send um, county government news um, out through the Nixel system. To access that, you text message 888-777, that's 888-777, and then you, in the subject line, put your zip code in there. And if you're not a Vigo County resident, but you work in Vigo County, make sure that you put a Vigo County 
zip code in there, and then you'll receive notifications um, that we that we send out. I mean, we will use this as an additional communication method um, as necessary. Great point. Thank you. So can you kind of take a step-by-step step to the process of confirming coronavirus here in Vigo County, and if that confirmation were to come down, how quickly would we be notified? I know the website, but would there be another channel? So again, if anybody thought that they had coronavirus, we would work with the state and get it then tested to make sure we had a confirmed case. If that is something that we did have, a PSA would be sent out to the media before this and even as an added thing with the website being put up. And Rondra, one of the things that we, had, one of the things that you might, uh, that would be an interesting piece to this is that Indiana is divided into districts and we've been that way since Homeland Security created the districts. In District 7, which is where Vigo County is located, we are assigned a district epidemiologist and we work with that person closely on all types of communicable diseases. One of the first things we do when we have a suspect case of something that's highly contagious is reaching out to that district epidemiologist and then work through them while they're working with the Indiana State Department of Health and CDC. One more question. Okay. Uh, this is for you, Greg. From Indiana State University standpoint, is there any thought going into the exchange program from any specific country that would involve monitoring or uh, modifying the, the process in any way? Sure. When I mentioned at the beginning that um, our decisions are guided by a particularly Center for Disease Control and the State Department, they have uh, different levels of threat to individuals who are traveling abroad. Uh, level three being a boarding, which means it's time to not be in that country anymore. Uh, and uh, so, so that that is what we have been communicating to students and faculty and anyone uh, that pay close attention to what uh, our, our federal officials are designating different countries. Again, by and large, it's still very safe to travel, uh, but there are certain countries uh, that have been identified as a level three or a or a um, an elevated threat. And uh, we just want to remain vigilant and pay close attention to uh, what federal officials are putting out there. Any other questions? All right, if you guys don't have anything else, thank you for coming.